Hi, welcome to our webinar, Power Up Your Instruction with Three Comprehension Strategies. Uh, we still have a few minutes before we get started, but in the meantime, thanks for joining us early and jump in that question box and share with us where you're joining from. Uh, I am coming to you from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Looks like Linnell is joining us from Hawaii. Thanks for being here. I know we have several team members who are joining us um, from various places around the United States. It's always fun to see where everyone's from. Uh, Phil's coming to us from Connecticut. Welcome. Ronald's coming to us from Oahu, Hawaii as well. I guess I should say aloha to y'all. Let's see, Kathy, welcome. Thanks for joining us from Georgia today. Let's see, Allison's coming to us from Alabama. Welcome, thanks for being here. So fun. It is two o'clock, we'll give everyone about 30 to 45 more seconds to join us and then we'll get started. Uh, Daniel's coming to us from Nebraska. Welcome. Not far from me here in Oklahoma. Uh, William from Mississippi. Mary's joining us from Florida. Thanks for joining us, y'all. Laura's coming to us from Virginia. Bob's from Greenville. Hi, Bob. Welcome back. It's always fun to see all the repeat uh, participants for these webinars. We appreciate you joining in with us every month. All right, y'all, so it is almost 201, so let's get started, what do you say? So I'm going to say welcome to power up your instruction with three comprehension strategies again. Also, as you know, for our repeat uh, participants, this session may be unlike other webinars or professional development sessions you've attended before. So it's very interactive and it relies on audience and participant interaction to really be successful. So be ready to open a new tab on your browser or to grab your smartphone or device to scan QR codes to participate in polls and surveys along the way. We are trying out a couple of new ed tech tools to the webinar. They're not new to you or me, but we haven't used them in our office hours webinars. So hopefully we rehearse that. It all goes smoothly today. And with that, let's get started. So comprehension might mean something different to each of us, right? Well, let's see what it means to you specifically. So there's two ways to participate in this activity. First, scan the QR code on the screen with the camera app from your smartphone, or click on the link that'll pop up in the chat in just a second. Once you're there, it's gonna take you to a Mentimeter site. You're gonna find a box where you can type in a brief definition of comprehension. That can be one word, it can be a phrase, it can be a sentence, whatever you need it to be. But share with us, what is comprehension? You know, as you're doing that, I start to think about my experience in the classroom. You know, I, I've taught kindergarten, uh, high school, college, and I always have students who read stuff and they're like, no, Miss Green, I read that. And while I believe they read that, when I asked them questions to check for understanding, they couldn't tell me what they had read because they were simply reading words on the page and they weren't reading to understand or comprehend the information. So I'm gonna jump over to the Mentimeter because I'm really curious to see how some of y'all have defined comprehension. So let's see what our Mentimeter site looks like today. So this is a free ed tech tool that has different ways that people can enter responses, multiple choice, they can vote, they can rank, they can do word clouds. Today we did open-ended response. So some of the definitions that we have coming in is the action or capability of understanding something, ability to know what something means, making meaning of what we read or experiences. Yes, that's exactly kind of what I was talking about when I think of comprehension from my experience in the classroom. 
uh, understanding of information, ability to understand, um, full understanding of a given subject. If students comprehend, they can explain in their own words. Absolutely. We have a lot. I think the common theme is kind of like the capability or the ability to understand something that they read, to, to apply what they hear or read. Absolutely. Comprehension is not just about words on a page. Uh, ability to recall and understand information, understand a concept, uh, understanding of subject matter. Right. So we're kind of seeing some trends here. I think if we did a word cloud, the word understanding would be really large here. Uh, the ability or capability to understand something um, would be some of the other larger words. So don't forget, you have access to this, so you can keep this. Um, we're going to come back to this towards the middle of our time together. So when we start to think about comprehension, I'm really going to start using some of those words that are on the screen, like understanding, the ability the, to understand, so the ability to explain in your own words, to make meaning of what we read or what we hear or what we experience. We're going to kind of jump on some of those as we continue. Thank you for participating. So like I said, my name is Mandy, content specialist. I've been a classroom teacher, worked in CTE, worked in instructional tech, done research on effective pedagogical practices, as we like to say. Uh, today, we're just going to kind of define comprehension, which is kind of what we just did, kind of develop some collective uh, definition and understanding of comprehension. We're then going to look at three higher order comprehension strategies to really power up our instruction um, for our students. So here comes one of our new ed tech tools. So we just define comprehension as a group. Now we're going to see kind of what we might know about comprehension. And this is completely random. But to do this, we're going to utilize a Kahoot quiz game. So I'm really hoping some of you have used a Kahoot quiz before. So there are some ways to get there. The easiest way is to go to www.kahoot.it, as you see on the screen. Once I open my website, you'll see a game pin. You're going to enter the game pin, and then it might ask you for your name. You can just enter your initials for today's purposes, or just your first name, or just your last name, or whatever you're comfortable with today as an adult learner. Um, then once we start the game, you'll see a question with four answer choices on my screen. On your screen, using your smart device or another tab, you will just see the answer choices. So they may be like red, blue, green, yellow, and that's how you'll answer. So let's jump into this, see how we do. So you're going to find that link in the chat as well. It's gonna pop up on the screen. So there is a free version of this, which is what we're using today. We're gonna to use the classic mode today. It does have music that will play. So when you go to Kahoot, dot it it'll ask you for that game pin you will enter 262-854 you can also scan the qr code if you want to your choice looks like we have a few people in oh look at that people are just popping in like crazy i'll give you a couple more seconds so like i said you're going to see the question with the answer choices with the words on my screen your screen will just show the color blocks that associate with the answer choices or options on my screen. So it looks like we have 25. This is awesome. It's like I feel like I'm a teacher of the class of like 30 learners. All right, y'all ready? Here we go. I'm going to start the quiz, and it's all about comprehension. Oops. Okay, comprehension. Here's our first question. What is one way to activate prior knowledge? Select your answer, red, blue, orange, or green. All right. Brainstorming ideas is one way to help activate prior knowledge for our learners in a session. So as you can see, you can see the number of people that selected each answer choice. Now, because we are kind of gamifying learning, it will rank you based on how quickly you answer the question and if the, your answer was correct or not. So this is our scoreboard. Next question, ready? It's a true or false. 
Comprehension is the understanding and interpretation of what is read. True or false? What's great about Kahoot is if people answer in faster than the 20 seconds, I can skip ahead. So that is true. And I'll show you where I got some of this research in a second. Okay, next question, you ready? Ooh, we had some changes in the leaderboard. All right, the big five of reading comprehension does not include which of the following? Select your answer. We're getting into some technical comprehension research here. All right, the ability to read with fluency is not one of the big five. All right, let's see our scoreboard. You ready? Do you see your name up there? Are you moving up? I have used Kahoot with my learners. True or false? Like yes or no? All right, let's see what our leaderboard. Ooh, 21 people have used it, great. Okay, here's our final podium. I don't know about you, whether I taught was with elementary, high school, or even doing this as part of professional development with teachers, people love the leaderboard, um, super fun. You can also play this in team mode. You can kind of create some competition. It looks like M was our number one uh, winner today. There's our first, second, third, and our runner ups. So thank you for playing. I'm actually gonna X, X this one out to turn off the music. So you're like, Mandy, Okay, what's the big deal? We just played Kahoot. We've got some, some answers from a uh, random comprehension information. Okay, so why did we play it? And why is this slide labeled rehearsal? Well, rehearsal is a concept that has a 0.75 effect size that accelerates student learning. So if you remember from some of our other webinars, John Hattie has done some research on effect size of different instructional practices. The average effect size is 0.4, meaning a student can accomplish 0.4 of their learning in a normal school year or cycle. So this rehearsal strategy has an effect size of 0.73, so almost double what is normal. So this refers to a mental technique that helps us remember information. So we're talking about comprehension, understanding, and now adding that memory and remembering factor. It includes memorizing information through repetition. It can also involve repeating information through visual cues, such as flashcards. So for us to do this, we utilize the idea and the practice of Kahoot, which is a free digital game to rehearse information that we already knew, ideally, right? So you could do this with your students. So thinking about the idea of rehearsal, so students are memorizing information through repetition. Uh, they're interacting with content in different ways because we know the more ways students interact with content, learning and student and achievement increase. How might you use this idea or concept of rehearsal in your classroom? Or how have you already been using it? So in that question box, just share with us some ideas of how you have or how you might use this idea of rehearsal in your classroom to increase comprehension and understanding. If you're using any of our GW products, you know that we have that companion site online that has e-flashcards, matching activities, vocabulary activities. Some of the titles have animations and videos. Those are all ways that we can utilize this concept of rehearsal where students are repeating that information over and over. So yeah, some people are talking about how they use demonstration videos. Absolutely, Phil, the gradual release model, Kathy, yes. Suzanne talks about teach facts. Absolutely, you know, if students are saying that information over and over, they're practicing, rehearsing it, and then they're teaching others about it. Like, that's the epitome of learning. Um, Allison talks about like working genetics and problems, quizzing students on the parts of like the brain and the heart during a dissection. Absolutely. Holly uses the companion website. Awesome, glad you can use that. 
So these are all ways that we are currently and can continue to use this idea of rehearsal to increase comprehension with our learners. Oh, there's some more that just popped in there. Some, I use Kahoot with a team scenario to get full engagement because the winning team gets an award of some sort. Absolutely. Uh, they use Kahoot to cover previous lectures. Great. Um, Robert, Rob practices a uh, practice test offering explanations and correct and incorrect answers. Yes, Rob. I love that whole incorrect and correct. It's talking about like examples and non examples. I feel like that really accelerates learning. Uh, Daniel uses turning point to review information. Absolutely. Thank you all for sharing and being so engaged in our webinars. It makes it so fun. And I, I learn something every time from y'all as well. All right, we're going to keep going for the sake of time. Because y'all know I love activities, right? But I like it because we get to interact with content and have these really cool conversations in the question box like we just did and online. So we're going to start linking and putting some of these ideas together. So this is a new tool that I haven't used um, in this session before. It's free. So you might have to click on a couple of X's to X out this login because you're not going to need to log in. But I want you to take some of those ideas from our what is comprehension when we had the Mentimeter with all of our different definitions. Take some of the ideas that came to mind or you saw in the Kahoot. And we're going to create a mind map or a concept map of all of our ideas and how they tie together. So this works best on a laptop. So I'm going to ask that you just try to stick to a laptop. If you can't, you can do it on a mobile device. It's just a little more difficult. You're going to click on the link that's in the chat. It's the tiny URL you see on the screen. Then once you're there, you're going to have a screen that's white and in the center, it will say comprehension in the blue square. You're going to add your word or phrase by clicking on the plus sign next to it. Now you're gonna start adding child and sub-child topics. So comprehension, click the plus sign, type your word or phrase here. You can add to everyone's um, spot. So we're gonna to collaborate together. Does that make sense? I hope so, because here we go. I'm gonna pop mine up on the screen so that we can see it. And I have a few other things that I'll say as you're adding your details to our concept map. So as you can see, when mine opens, I am going to probably have to X out two places because we don't need to log in for this. I made it so it's completely anonymous. And we don't need to save our progress because I'll save it on the back end. So, oh, yes, you already started. Perfect. So keep adding to each other's phrases and words. You can see at the top, we have 19 plus participants in our um, concept map right now. So our main idea is comprehension that's in the middle. You're going to add words or phrases that tie into comprehension, such as reading or understanding. There you go. I love watching this come in. It's so fun to watch it in real life. So you can add your ideas from our first activity with what is comprehension. You can add new ideas that have emerged since then. Uh, you can either Google something real fast if you want to Google something and put something in there. You can even put in what your students might say. That might be an interesting concept map too. So let's see what our concept map is looking like. So our main topic is comprehension. It's really looking like the ideas of brainstorm, application, retainment, interpret, analyze, demonstrate, we're explaining. I see analyze again, talking about experiences. So if we were to create this in our class, students could also tie in different topics. So we're using this idea of comprehension as our main topic, just so that you can experience this concept that is our next uh, second power up comprehension strategy. So I'll give you about 30 more seconds to start adding any other word that you wanna add. Uh, experience, analyze came up again, understand, identify the ability to solve problems, yes, So that's right, you just click on that word and you can see the plus sign and add to it. You'll learn, this is fantastic. Inclusion, absolutely. So these are all the ideas that come off of our um, topic of comprehension today. Storytelling, yes, this is phenomenal. For the sake of time, because y'all know I like to keep things moving, I just want you to experience it and have a little touch point. And we're gonna keep moving and tie in some more items to it. I'm gonna jump back to this um, PowerPoint presentation. My slide deck. So you're like, okay, that was fun, Mandy. Like, why use concept maps? Like, 
have you ever used a concept map or like a mind map in your class? Share with us in the question box if you've used concept maps in your class and kind of how you use them and why you use them. You know, these really help students demonstrate their content knowledge by creating an illustration using words. You could even add pictures or symbols to that. And it also shows the connection between those words. You can also think about this as learners arranging new information and connecting it to what they already know. So if we look at John Hattie's work and we talk about effect size again, this idea of concept mapping has an effect size of 0.6. So it's still greater than the 0.4, that's our average. You know, and some research actually suggests that this strategy takes learner learning to even a deeper stage because they're arranging this new information with their current information or prior knowledge that they had about the topic. You know, you can create these concept maps with any topic in the center. We just use comprehension because that's our theme for today. You can have students do this individually. They could do it collaboratively as a group. Uh, you can even do it analog on a piece of like butcher or poster paper and have cards cut out. Students can paste the cards or tape the cards on the paper and use markers to show the connections. There's so many different ways to do this in person, analog or digitally. I'm going to jump into the questions because I would love to hear how you have used concept maps um, in your classroom lately. So it looks like um, they've used them. So Linnell's used it in nursing, the concept mapping. Absolutely. They've used them, the answer garden. Kathy, I would love to hear more about answer garden. I don't know about that one. Um, to explain, to teach back. Uh, they use this brainstorming. Absolutely, this concept map can be brainstorming as well. It's just it has those concepts and you start showing those connections between the words and the phrases. Um, they use they draw diagrams to depict the relationship between the connections of our nursing diagnosis. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so yeah, so concept maps are all about showing those connections with different concepts and how um, we're learning about them. Thank you so much for sharing, y'all. Now. Our third comprehension strategy to power up our instruction is the jigsaw method. We are actually not going to participate in this method uh, due to the sake of time because it would take some time. But this method has an effect size of 1.2 on student learning. That is three times the average effect size of 0.4. So how do you jigsaw, right? Um, if you've ever used the jigsaw method in your class with reading, share with us. We love to hear how you do it. And there's so many different ways you can actually do a jigsaw method. But really, you divide your students or learners into groups. You divide a reading selection into sections, and each student has a certain section. So they'll read that section, and that's the only section they'll read of the textbook or the assignment that they're reading. And then they'll go with a group of groups from other sections, and they'll teach each other about what they learned, ideally. Um, now, while we're not exploring this, I'm just gonna show you an example. So I've done this as part of professional development and training with some of our Goodhart Wilcox products. So for example, I was doing math for financial literacy. You can see that I had group one read chapter 11, section one, group two read chapter 11, section two, group three read chapter 11, section three. Then with those groups, they talked about everything that they read and decided on what was important. Then I had created new groups that included one person from group one, one person from group two, and one person from group three, and they taught each other about their different sections of the textbook. So that essentially, is the jigsaw method. I have pictures to mine just so they could see the different sections that they were reading, um, but they're teaching others about what they learned. So it has, not only are they reading, but they're teaching others, which increases that effect size and student learning. All right, I don't see anything in the question box right now, so I'm gonna keep on moving. Oops, went too fast. Did y'all see that? Went too fast. All right, we are here. So. We're, now we're gonna start kind of tying everything in, you know, we have about seven or eight minutes left. So we're gonna start tying and making those connections a little bit tighter. We're gonna start sharing some things that were important to us to see if they are important to others or if they trigger anything. So to do this, we're gonna use one of my cool strategies I love called triangle, square, circle. So you will complete the prompts in three columns. The first one is share with us three things you learned today. That's your triangle. The triangle has three points. You're gonna share three things you learned. Next. Share something you agreed with from today in the square column. So you can think of this as something that squares with your thinking or that you agree upon. Then you're going to share something that you have a question about so that we can circle back to that 
to make sure it gets answered. All right, so there's two ways as usual to access this Padlet. You're going to scan that QR code with the um, camera app on your phone or click on that link in the chat box and it'll take you to our Padlet. While you're accessing the Padlet, let me tell you a little bit more about this strategy. It's a reflective strategy that helps learners reflect on important pieces of content. They can also ask questions about anything they do not understand. This strategy can be used at the beginning of a lesson to engage students. It can be used in the middle of a lesson to help students explain what they are currently learning. Or it can be used at the end of a lesson, like in today, to evaluate and reflect on what we did today. It brings in those higher order thinking skills by having learners analyze, evaluate, and summarize the information. You can actually do this in like an analog, face-to-face, -face, pencil and paper version by creating three columns on a sheet of paper. Or you can use it in a digital form like Padlet. You could either create a Google form or some other survey with those three questions as well. So let's jump into our Padlet and see three things you found important from today, two things that square with your thinking, and one question that we need to circle back to. There it goes. So once again, we're using Padlet, which is a free educational technology tool. Make sure you check with your IT department as usual to make sure you can use it on your network and with your students. So three things that are important from today, the concept map, uh, Kahoot game, the, some of the statistics. So bringing in some of that research from um, making learning visible, the big five of literacy. Uh, the rehearsal concept, there's some new tools, great. Rehearsal concept, answer garden, jigsaw, absolutely. Some tools that we can use to engage our students. So not only are we keeping them engaged with these activities, but we're allowing students ways to process information and new content through those activities, absolutely. Um, some things that you agreed with, the jigsaw method, yeah. Rehearsal concept, mind mapping, concept mapping. Uh, the many ways comprehension was defined, right? So we had several different ways, but we found those common themes. Uh, concept mapping works, absolutely. Um, some questions that we have coming in. Answer garden, we'll share that. Um, other than flashcards, are there any of these included in the instructor resources or LMS cartridges? And when you, whoever typed that, will you explain a little bit more um, detail in the question box? And I'll jump into that and help you answer that one. No questions, just a comment. Need to practice some of these strategies. Yeah, you know, we just try to provide some different strategies um, that you can add to your teacher toolkit that are pretty easy that you could use tomorrow if you really had to. Um, just some different ways to engage students, because I don't know about y'all, but I tended to stick to the same kind of strategies over and over in my class. And I was kind of hesitant to uh, push myself or extend myself to try new ones because they were my comfort zone. I knew they worked. Um, but we try to provide some different varying activities for you to use. Uh, how do you address teachers who uh, improperly implement the jigsaw, right? So, I don't know, I believe a lot of that um, peer modeling. Uh, and, you know, there are some variations on jigsaw, and so you might want to research some of the different variations. Uh, the one I did show is very basic. Um, what else do we have coming in? I, I just appreciate y'all so much for participating and sharing with us. So this is our um, triangle, square, circle. I always get those words in the wrong order. Strategy that we can reflect on. I'm gonna jump back to the presentation because we have a couple more slides to get to and we have like three minutes. So y'all know I like to kind of pull it all together at the end, right? So um, our producer behind the scenes is gonna add a couple of links to the chat of where some of our research came from today. Feel free to click on those links bookmark them on your um, browser. But today, our three power-up strategies for comprehension were the rehearsal concept, concept mapping, and the jigsaw method, all that have higher than average effect sizes on learning and student achievement. To do so, we used activities such as Kahoot, Mentimeter, and Padlet to not only share our ideas, but to help keep it engaged and help that conversation to continue to flow in the digital format or space that we're in. We then use the strategy triangle square circle 
to reflect on our learning, to think about some important pieces that we want to continue with, some things that we agreed with, and a question or so that we have um, in the future. If you have any additional questions, right now is a great time to pop them in that question box so that we can get them answered at the very end. The research we used today came from the K20 Learn website, the Big Five Literacy Research, and John Hattie's research called Visible Thinking. You can Google any of those and find the research that we use today as well, and those links are in the chat. So with that, thank you for joining us today. We always appreciate having you in attendance. Don't forget there'll be that evaluation at the very end, and we have about one minute for questions. So I'm gonna pop in that question box, see if we can get answered. And if I don't get it answered, please feel free to email me. I am more than happy to follow up with you. I would love to help um, make your job easier. So, do we have access to this recording? Yes, they are going, we have a new site that they will be put on, on the gw.com site um, under webinars. You will find them, and then also under professional development. Uh, all these resources are fully independent from the standard GW. Are these resources fully independent? The resources I shared today have really nothing to do with GW. They're just some teaching and instructional practices that we all can benefit from from research. Um, what else do we, I think that's all the questions. Thanks, Suzanne, for your kind words. So glad you're here. Thanks, Bob. Always great to see you. Phil, thanks for your questions. If I didn't answer them, Phil, send me an email. You know I'll get back to you. Um, we're more than happy to help. And with that, it is 2.30. I don't see any more questions coming in. So I hope you have an awesome day and we'll see you in a couple of weeks.